Hi, I'm Charlie Collins, and this is the Donegal Sport Hub Donegal Daily Championship Podcast. And you're very welcome to what is our final podcast of 2023. It's the Michael Murphy Sports and Leisure Championships, of course, and we're here with Donegal Daily and Donegal Sport Hub, joined by John Harn and Danny O'Donnell, as usual, to look back over the weekend and maybe look forward to one or two things happening towards the end of the year and into 2024. We're going to start with the action at the weekend and uh, looking back to Saturday, first of all, up in Killy Garden, where the Junior A final replay, the B, sorry, the Junior B final replay was played and also the C Championship. And Danny, a uh, victory for Perico by a point over McCool's and St Mary's Convoy with a point to spare over Robert Emmons in the replay. Two tight matches. Two tight matches, and again, Charlie, in any final, you, you want tight competitive matches. And I said this after the was it the junior final that they're good finals to win when they're tight. And I think the both replays were there, or just no, the first, the, the first second one, replay, the junior yeah. B, yeah, the yeah. other one wasn't. So, look, the Pedigo story I mean, Pedigo are one of those, I mean, the, probably one of the smallest clubs in the county, yeah. real outpost, almost out in their own. And I remember years and years ago, Charlie, we played them as Nee Murray, we were Division Four at the time. And at that stage, it was a struggle for them as well. And that's, I'm going back 20, 25 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And they've kept that They've flame. struggled on. They've struggled on. And some of the, like, I don't know the lads, but some of the boys playing at the weekend were well into their 40s, I think. Yeah, they were. Um, but like we said last week about Narosso, hold on to players. Like those players, the lifeblood of the likes of Pedigo to keep alive and keep going and keep. Now, the younger players, I think, might play for the Breach, which is good for them in terms of underage and that. Yes. But um, yeah, a huge one for them as a club. And that backs up. I think they won something similar last year. Um, or won the championship final last year and then the Convoy story Convoy actually won the intermediate B last year and then because their senior team got relegated, got relegated. they had to play junior yeah. this year now they've backed it up by winning that so um, the Convoy club Charlie and we know this are doing a lot of work a lot of players coming through and they've yet to crack that ceiling at the intermediate level you know, they're back down junior again but if you've two Championship successes under your belt at reserve level. Surely that will bear fruit eventually. I know there's some big players back this year for them. Yeah. And I know you fancy them in the junior championship. Very saw much them a couple so. of times. So Very much so. If they could ever get back out of junior again, you would think that they have the players there to make that step up and stay intermediate and then challenge again. But a lot of working on in there, as yeah. we know. So, yeah, big day for the, both clubs. Yeah. John? Uh, just on the Pedigo thing, Charlie, I remember they won a a f- county final out in O'Donnell Park maybe six or seven years ago it might have been junior B or something like they have played junior A yeah they have tried they've, they have a they've tried they've dropped back, yeah, yeah. They've dropped yeah. back. so it's not easy for them Terry. and I remember when I was up by the Masters there was a good player there Kevin Kane I think was his name and he, he scored, scored a goal, he scored a goal yeah. was he playing yeah. the weekend yeah, he was, I think he so was, he's yeah. getting on yeah. and there was a couple other boys there up at the Masters too so fair play to Pedigos but Danny says an outpost Terry nearly in from, well, on the Fermanagh border well out of the way and you know the Easiest thing, as Danny says, they're playing on the rage with with knee breed, and I suppose the easiest thing would be to go amalgamate, in with knee breed yeah. and amalgamate. But they're yeah. sticking, they're, they're holding the ground, and you got to admire them, Terry, because it's not easy. Mm. And they're playing at the lowest level, but they're putting the team out, and they got a bit of silverware, and hopefully, you know, they'll move up to junior B next year, and they'll give it a rattle. So, yes, and Terry, they're doing their best, and, and fair play to them, and they, they got their day of glory, and you know, yeah. it just keeps them going. Terry gives the people in the community, and you know, it gives the club a lift and it keeps them, you know, keep them at it again for next year. So yeah. fair play to them. I was just thinking, John, we talked about McCool's here a couple of times uh, over the, the last number of weeks. They had a team in the senior semi-final, uh, the senior B semi-final and a team in the C final. So things good there when you have that many teams competing and Absolutely, doing well. Absolutely, Terry. We, we bet them in a C final a number of years ago, but they bet us last year. And ah, a mixture of youth and ex- yeah. uh, older boys, Terry, coming to the end of their days and then young boys giving them a game. And at that level, Terry, a lot of it is about giving boys a game, you know, who want to play football. And it's it's, it's the national sport of the country, Terry, and sometimes that's forgotten about. And we don't, you know, give a lot of, you know, we don't promote the recreational side of football, and I'm not saying it's recreational, but it's not as serious as no, reserve no, or thing. No. And it's a, it's a it's a game for boys who still want to play. So you know, fair play to McCoods and a lot of clubs in Donegal. In fairness, Jerry, we've a lot of clubs. Well, we've five or six clubs that have a third team. Yes, which you don't get in a lot of other counties. Not. You know, so uh, you know, fair play to the clubs. And I'm McCoods, Jerry. The the big numbers out, and they're giving boys a game and. You know, we'll hear see, more from them. We'll hear from, more from yeah. them, exactly. Danny, will Robert Emmons be disappointed to lose that Junior B? Because they were to play in the Junior A, I think, at the start. They were in the draw for the Junior A and then they, they stepped back down to Junior B. So they'll be disappointed they've lost that final, I'm sure. Oh, they have to be, Charlie. That's their senior team, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, if, look, Robert Evans have struggled. Like, I know from chatting to one or two of them when we met them a couple of years ago in the league and 
there seems to be some kind of issue with them in terms of players committing and different things. And I know Castlefin Celtic were a strong soccer club there for a while, and but they seem to have slipped back as well. So unless immigration's hit them, but I know they made a conscious decision to play in that in that junior B competition to try and get their their lads out and get playing and try and win something. So they would have targeted that big time. You know, probably targeted more than Conway would have targeted. Yeah, yeah. And they will be disappointed because that's your that's your senior team, that's your main team. And they would need to be because I don't think they have a reserve team. No. So no. like there's a numbers problem there, obviously, whether it's a num- lack of commitment from players or lack of players, I'm not sure, or lack of numbers. I don't know what the story is, but you'd worry about them mm. because no, if they I, needed that win to maybe build on something. Yeah. Do you go back next year to try and win on Junior B? It's not that insane. And they had two chances at it, Danny. You and know. two chances but, at uh, it. In yeah. fairness, Conway were the better team in both days. In both days, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so. Jerry, you don't want to be too critical, but you know, I made this. We made this point before. Like the Ross are one of the smallest clubs in the county. You know, now I know you might say they have more tradition than Castlefin, but Castlefin, Jerry, is a big area. Yeah. You know, they used to have the Sandy Harper Cup. That's you right. You know, a big yeah, thing, a big and, thing. And, and and they had floodlights when no one had floodlights. The county team used to train over there, Terry, yeah. when I was on the county team in the, in, in the early two thousands, and you know, good people, but they seem to have fallen away. You know, maybe them good people in the club have fallen away, and then there was a bit of. Friction. I don't know friction, but what Donny Loop and some of the Donny Loop boys would play for Ernie, and there was a bit of that there. Maybe if Castle Fun weren't going well, you'd they'd cross the border and play yeah, for yeah. playing Tyrone and bits and things. But I think Terry they need to get their act together. They might need help, Charlie, from someone. You know, do the county board go into someone? Because Castle Fun's not a small area, so they, yeah. the, the people size. the people are there. Like there's not as if they don't have the players. I've seen mm. on Facebook or somewhere the, the, the pen the pen picks of the team, and there were a lot of young players. So you know, maybe they are coming again, trying to get the youth going and coming with a young team. But you know, they should be doing better. And I said all the time, Charlie goes back to maybe off the field, having a good committee, having good people there, getting good structures in place. And you know, I know Liam Sweeney from Strabane was in training them this year, and I think big Liam, a good GA man, probably tried to give them a lift. But, you know, they need to be doing better, Charlie. Absolutely. All right, that left us down with two finals to be played on Sunday, of course, the Senior B and the Senior A. Uh, just to remind you, of course, our, our programme, our podcast, sponsored by Donaff Construction Company in Boston, Massachusetts. Thanks to them for their support. It's very much appreciated. Paul Freed from Morris GA, of course, the main man there. Thank you again, Paul. Let's just look at the Senior B final, John, briefly. Uh, it looked as if A. Rua had it won comfortably at one stage midway through the second half after young Weber got the goal and I think they went five points up. Yeah, but Gidor got the last four points of the game and, and they were, A. Rua were just hanging on at the end there. Hanging on, Charlie. And, uh, but they'll be happy with it. A win's a win, doesn't oh, matter yeah. how you get it. And uh, you know, No more than their senior team. They have big numbers and they're pushing hard. And I've seen some of the interviews afterwards that they're not calling it reserve team as a development team. So, you know, they couldn't feel two years ago, John. Well, that, that's it. So another, you know, that they're getting their act together. Yeah. So, yeah, that's right, Terry. You're right. I forgot about that there. So they'll be happy with that one because Gidor, with that under-21 team that won the championship last year, they had a lot of young players and mm. good quality players coming through there. So uh, Bally Shannon, you know, wouldn't have been favourites for that, Terry. I would have Gidor as favourites with a bit of experience with Cassidy and some of them other boys that would have played senior. And uh, a good victory for Bally Shannon. And if they have young players coming through, Terry, you know, no matter how good you are, sometimes you do need a year or two at adult football, at reserve level, maybe at 19 and 20 before you're 21, before you can come into the senior team, develop a wee bit, get that bit of experience. So no doubt Bally Shannon, there plenty of young players coming through and that'll be that'll be a boost to them. Yeah. Gidor will be disappointed to lose that one, Danny. Ah, uh, the will, Charlie, because I, I would know that Gidor team, we played them in the all or the county junior guilted final um, yeah. down the banks this summer, or this in May there, and they were, they were a good, good team. Good good team. They were a young team. Yeah. Now, Kevin Cassidy wasn't playing that day, Darley Corn wasn't playing that day, so mm. they brought in that experience since then, and they were pretty impressive coming through the campaign. Um, I watched Bally Shannon beat St. Unans in the quarterfinal yeah. in Conway that yeah. night. Impressive. They're impressive enough, yeah, mm. so they're always going to be a dangerous team for Gidor, and on the day, they got the crucial score, the goal, which opened up that five-point gap. But see the last 10 minutes of that game, Charlie, and I remember saying this, I, said, I hope the senior final has the same ex- as ex- ex- <laughs> exciting as <laughs> this because the crowd in the stand, yeah. big Godot crowd, decent Bally Shannon crowd, they got stuck into the game. The game was yeah. exciting. Godot were coming, making a comeback and they had a couple of chances yeah, in the last a couple, couple of bad ways, near the end. A couple of bad ways. Yeah, that probably would have, I thought the game would have gone to extra time. Yeah. I think both teams might have taken that at the time. But Bally Shannon got their hands on a couple of balls around midfield didn't get any scores, but were able to kill the clock a wee bit. And then Gidor came another wave of attack and that last chance went wide. Mm. And uh, now Bally Shannon celebrated that like it was a senior, oh, senior championship absolutely. win. It's a big deal yeah, for them. Yeah, and yeah. look, they're one of the big, I've said this before, one of the big clubs in the county. Their senior team are starting to knock on the door again at senior level. And 
the, the developing team come behind them. That's only going to push things at right. training. These young lads now are going to go to John McNulty and say, look, we can step in next year and make our senior team stronger. So all positive signs for Ballyshannon. Yeah, for sure. D- different teams and different clubs, Terry, on different journeys of, you know, yeah, starting yeah, out and yeah, coming through yeah. and trying to build something. So, you know, it can be, you know, it means different things at Run different clubs. Running a championship, so there's no harm in that regard. There's no harm, John. exactly, exactly, yeah, so... Okay. Excitement there, unfortunately, John. No excitement followed in the senior final. Was it as one of the most disappointing finals we've seen in a long time? Maybe <laughs> not if you're from Neve Connell, Charlie. Then not care. No, I'm I, talking from a neutral. I know point exactly view, from a neutral yeah. point of view, Charlie. It was disappointing. Mm-hmm. You know, I said here last week it was my mantra all year that the only team that could beat Neve Connell was St. Junons, and the only team that could beat. St. Junos was Neve Connell or like that's right so yeah. I always had in the back of my mind that they were, the, they were the two best teams and obviously Neve Connell are a step ahead of everyone at this stage and we talked about Guido coming in Cherry on the favourable side of the draw and they admitted that to themselves and there was, <coughs> there was no hiding that there you know no, no. but it just the gap was bigger I think than we thought on Sunday you know mm. we know Neve Connell are a great team Charlie they've proven that uh, you know people some people are a bit surprised the way they played and the way they were at it early but listen I think Neve Connell thought, thought that we're a lot better than these boys and we'll just show it from day one and the, we we have no need to sit back and be cagey no. because Guido don't have the quality to hurt us we have another string to our bow we have another we string it. to our bow and I think they just they were very comfortable Cherry. now everyone can go into a county final as hot favourites and not perform so you know the pressure was on them they delivered and they delivered in spades and just that first half Charlie that their score taking and their shot selection and execution of everything was brilliant yeah. you know even from the throw and like Keir Thompson was bearing down in goal only for he was pulled down Yeah, you know I mean the yeah. next short kicker came out and, and the poor Gidor boy fumbled it a couple of times and you know all it needed was a toe poke and the Anthes were going to be in on yeah. top for a goal and they just took their chances and as the man said to me when AJ Geller comes up and swings on to his left foot and has a shot you know what I mean you, you know Gladys are comfortable it went wide but you know they yeah. were just they were just in control Charlie and you had to you just have to take your hats off to that first half performance and the game was over Charlie yeah. someone said to me 10 minutes another man said to me it was over after 7 minutes mm. once they were 4-0 up it was kind of you couldn't see a way back for Guido 5-0 Danny very quickly and then 9-2 coming up to half time I mean it was gone the game was gone from Guido at that stage there was no way back no, 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 there's no way back, Charlie. And look, I, I said in here last week that I thought Nikon would come off the leash a wee bit. Yeah. And I thought they would chase down the Gidor kick out, and that's exactly what they did. Look, they went out to make a statement on Sunday. Um, and I did think they would, I didn't think they, f- they would fear Gidor, but they did show them enough respect to go after them, mm. to not let them <clears throat> get into the game, not Never get, get a foothold in the game. No. But that first, that's first nine, I think they're five points after nine minutes, yeah. and it was ruthless, it was efficient. And what Gidor needed, and we said, I said in here last week, are Gidor going to lose this game on their own terms or on the Connell's terms? And to be fair to Gidor, they did try and play, even though they were three or four points down very quickly. They still had, they still tried to drive at them when they had possession of the ball. They didn't sit down with 15 behind the ball. They pressed up on kickouts. It didn't work out for them. Yeah. But at least they come away from it knowing exactly where they stand in terms of their level compared to the Connell because you can go very defensive against the Connell lose by three or four points and get a false sense of where you're at Yeah, like you don't know exactly where they're at which I think is a good place for them because they know the work has to go in over winter to start closing that gap but in terms of I mean, even in, in that first couple of minutes after the couple of kickouts that didn't go right for Gidor there was a mark that Orr McNeilish should have been awarded I think it was the fourth it was turned he he, put it, he caught it kind of half fumbled it but re-caught it Put his hand up. Yes, Eric Feely didn't give yeah. the mark. Yeah. The ball was turned over. They couldn't get their fourth point. Mm. The next kick out, there's a good old lad. I think it's Darrow Beale standing free to catch it clean. Goes through his hands. Fifth point. So everything that could go wrong for Gidor in that first. They also missed a free by Ethan Harkin. I think Ethan Harkin had a wide mm. as well. So in that first 10 minutes when Gidor needed everything to go right and needed the to be right. off it, nothing went right. Mm. And then on the opposite, opposite side of that, everything that Neil Connell did was just... Like what they showed on Sunday, Charlie, and I was sitting stand watching it, and I was quite happy to see what I was seeing because they showed their class. Yeah, very you know, much. And so. they left nothing in doubt in terms of who are the best team in the county. You yeah. know, last year there was some talk about if Jun Yunus didn't have the red card, you know, could Yunus have nicked that one because Yunus beat them the year before. I think they went out on Sunday to make a statement. I think they went out to say, look, we're the best team in the county. They've now won four of the last five championships. Okay, I said it last week that they've lost five. That last, they lost five over a period of 
was 18 years. Mm-hmm. In the last five years, they've only lost one championship match, and that was to St. Unions yeah. in 2021. Yeah. So this is a formidable outfit, um, and they showed all of that on, on Sunday. Mm. John, there was a couple of times in the first half in the press box, we, we were watching it obviously very closely, where they had everybody behind the ball as they do, but they turned Gidor over and all of a sudden there was six or seven or eight Leaf Connell mm-hmm. players up near the 20 metre line. Mm-hmm. The speed of the turnover and the transition is just incredible. Gidor no answer to it. No, no, Gidor aren't, aren't at that level, Charlie, and probably haven't come up against them enough at that level to, to know what to do. And that's what they do, Terry. You know, if a team does get the ball, they're comfortable enough. They all go back, and as I said, I've said it a hundred times. They back themselves that you'll make the mistake. The opposition team will make the mistake, and the tackle and the hand pass, the loopy hand pass, they'll knock it out of your hands and they'll break. And Terry, the athleticism, as you say, oh. is frightening. Like you know, they have runners. They have like there are, as Danny says, five, seven county finals in a row. They've won five. You just build up so much experience, Charlie, so much conditioning, so much confidence, you know, so much know-how. You, 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 you know, you don't just get that out of flick of a switch on, on, a, on a day, you know. So they've built that up, Charlie, and they're just so good at it. And when they break, they know what they're doing. Everyone knows what they're doing. They break, they break, they break, and one man will carry it and they'll give it to someone else. And they'll always give it to the man in the right, right place. Yeah. There's no glory hunters. You have to admire their teamwork. And it doesn't matter who scores as long as they score. And they're very, very good at it, Charlie. Very good at it. Now, I know what Daddy said about Gidor there. You know, they know what to do now to go back. But for me, Charlie, it, it was that kind of defeat that are you sitting in Gidor thinking, we're so far off this level. Mm-hmm. Would we not, you know, would some of the young fellas, Daddy, not think, well, I'm away to Australia. What, what's the hang about for here? I don't know, Charlie. I'm just yeah, putting yeah, that I'm out there. And it was yeah, that kind yeah. of performance that you thought, Jesus, we're so far away yeah. from this here. You know, yeah. and there's no sign of need. Well, it, it, it kind of was summed up for me when when Gidor got the goal, and it, it didn't matter. Oh no, the Jesus! It, it, it didn't matter. matter like it you know, the goal in the all. county final is usually a big why. deal. Uh, just it, it didn't matter. It, okay, it was going to put a wee bit of a gloss uh, on the score, final but score, but all. apart that's all it was going to do. You know. No. Yeah. But can they dominate now, Danny? I know it's dangerous to talk that way, but look, looking at them and and the way they can deal with situations, and the, again, as you say, the way they played. Differently, do we normally seen them over the last few years in finals and big games like that? They played very. They they made a statement right from the start, yeah. which we haven't seen from them maybe yeah. previously. But, but I, I said last week, Charlie, that everything we judged in the Connell on recently was on the games against St. Unions, yeah. the two semi-finals, the two finals, where they do sit in against, and it's because of Sean Patton. I believe it's mm-hmm. because of Sean Patton, and also because I do believe that they think that the only team that can match them in terms of conditioning is St. Unions because nobody else can at the minute. And what they've built up over the years is an unbelievable... The conditioning of the players is something else. And if you look at their age profile, we talk about the older players, but they're still only 34, 35. Yeah. I think the age profile was 23 to 35, roughly. Mm-hmm. So they're all pretty much in their prime. The strength and conditioning that they do hasn't just started in the last 12 months or two years. It's been ongoing for yeah. five, six, seven, eight years. So you, you build on that year on year. And it's very difficult for a Gidor team or any other team at the moment, even McCool's, Glenn Swilly, to when you need the Connell to come off their game to close the gap. Because mm-hmm. if they're absolutely on it, you know, their conditioning, their fitness. I mean, you never see a new, a new Connell player standing with his hands on his hips or his knees out of breath. They are really, really fit. But on top of all that, Charlie, their style of play, you know, I, I kind of stood back watching as a coach. How do you break this team down? How do you beat this team? You have three major problems against the Connell. One, you have to have a culture within your own group and maybe within your own club that comes with time. You can't do it overnight. Mm-hmm. That creates a winning mentality, a winner-takes-all mentality. Uh, I'm going to do something mentality rather than want to do something. I always say, everybody wants to win the senior championship. Yeah. But you've got to go and do things to get there. And the Nick Connell boys are doing it all the time in terms of on the field and off the field. They're doing the doing. They're, they're, they're letting their football do all the talking. So you've got to you match them for that type of culture, that mentality. The second thing you have to match for them is like we all talk about the system. Like the system is just a system. It's their players. They're fifteen players on the field. I mean, do they get enough credit? I remember saying a couple of years ago, people said on paper, St. Eunice made of the best fifteen. You, you can't argue with that anymore. They no, call that's, the best fifteen. That, that's nonsense. You know, they call the best fifteen. And their, their decision making. 
I mean, that, they scored a point. I think the third point they scored. Guido pressed up aggressively in the kicker, which we thought they would. And they always backed themselves in the long kicker. Somebody had a stat that they won 100% of their own kickers and 60% of Guido's kickers. Yeah. I mean, you can't survive in a game of football off those stats. Yeah. But the ball was kicked out to the terrace side and Oren Doherty kind of pulled away from the potential break. And he just said to himself, I'm trusting Kieran uh, Thompson to get off. a flick to this. Mm-hmm. Kieran mm-hmm. Thompson up against three or four men, got the flick. Oren Doherty won it. Now, Oren Doherty could have progressed with the ball in hand and kicked over an easy point. He took it outside the boot. Yeah. Coral over a brilliant score. That was the third yeah. score in yeah. the game. Yeah. So you're going to have to match them for their mentality. You're going to have to match them for their football ability, 15 on 15. And nobody at the minute can do that. And and then you've got what, what this so-called system. But it's a simple game plan to have. They move the ball at pace all the time. They don't take unnecessary solos. When they see green grass, they attack it because they know they're going to have runners with them. Yeah. Because they trust that the fitness levels are there, that if I go, I'm going to have somebody right and left of me. If I pop the ball inside to Brendan McDyer or Jim or O'Malley, they have the experience and the know-how to make the runs to get on the ball. They don't need to be blinding pace. Like they're not going to cut you open for pace, McDyer and O'Malley, no. but their movement and their cuteness and their experience, they get on the ball, they lay it off to somebody else, Leo gets on it, makes something happen. So as a as a collective, so sorry, the question asked me, are they going to dominate? The only way they can be stopped is somebody has to match them for all of those three things. Yeah. Right? And that won't happen overnight. So you've got McCool's making progress. You've got Glenn Swilly making progress. Guido now have a serious question mark over them. Kilcar were put to the sword by them. Do they have the wherewithal to go back to the well, to come back and try and build and close the gap? Because that gap won't close overnight. So the only club at the minute with the ability of closing the gap is St. Unions. But are St. Like St. Unions are close to them. They've beaten them once. They've drawn with them a couple of times. But until they can beat them man-to-man at times, they need to get a better Jack McKelvey. They need to get a better Kieran Thompson, the Doherty's, Ethan O'Donnell. And at the minute, they're not getting so a better done that them. enough over that, the last that's five been, years. So you might get them just, in an off game. Yeah, but yeah. This, this like, is, we, we said that we're watching probably, we said this last year as well, and people are now all starting to say it, this is the best club team that I've seen in Donegal. Yeah, because of what they bring, and you you can't close down one player in the corner to say you can keep them quiet, you keep them quiet. No, you have to keep fifteen. No, quiet. It, it used to be an old thing, Charlie. The Glenswilly boys won't like me saying this, but you know when we used to be playing Glenswilly back ten or fifteen when we were when we were going well and they were going well, and boys would say, "Oh, Glenswilly, look at so they've only got Murphy and Needland, yeah, maybe Copper, Kieran Bonner, the rest of them are you know this mm-hmm. thing they're mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. but like." Jesus, Joe Gibbons was as good as halfback that played club football for five or six years. You know, yeah. uh, Shorty McDade, a cornerback, Eamon Ward at fullback. You know, experience, good players. Like, that's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. The good players, the Crawford, Savvy on his day, you know, plenty of, you know, uh, Cahill Galler. You know, they were good players and people didn't give them enough credit. Well, I know around St. Unions, I'm not saying they didn't give enough credit, but there was this thing, oh, they've only Murphy and Need yeah, and that's it. Yeah, you yeah. know, and that wasn't the case. Charlie Kilcarra found that out to their cost. You know what I mean? We were lucky enough we got the better of them, but they, they still ended up with three championships. That Glen Swilly team, a very good team with a pile of good players. And I think what Danny saying now is true. People are beginning to say now, yes, this Glenn's team is a very good team with very good players, where once upon a time it was all the system and they're hard to break down and they'll beat you 10 9 and low scoring. Mm-hmm game and Kieran Thompson will kick a few big points and they'll wear you down but you know the 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 play the way they do and the stand they do Terry, every one of their players has to be a, a very good footballer and that's what they have very very good footballers and you know you just have to take your hat off them it's not yeah. easy for me but as a senior man you, 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 you asked are, 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 dom- are they going to dominate Donegal club football they are dominating Donegal mm, club yeah, football yeah. like Guido have won one championship since 2006 I know they followed up on Ulster, so that's yeah, massive. Yeah, massive. St. Eunice have won one championship since 2014, so 14 21. Yeah. Right? Glenn Swilly won three in the, in the recent, say, in the last 10 years or so. Kilcar have won one. So the only team that's been in there consistently are Lee Connell. So they are they are dominating at the minute. The record proves it. They've won four of the last five championships. They've been in the last seven finals. And nothing to suggest that they won't for the next five years. But look, look at the players they have. And, yeah. and I don't know if you just spoke to Brendan McDyer after the game on Sunday. I but did. You asked him a question about next year. I did. I've heard senior players in clubs over the years saying, oh, I don't know, Charlie, I'll see how the winter goes, I'll see how mm. the body feels. He had no hesitation. No. His first reply was, 
Oh, well, we'll be back next year. What, what else are we going why to do? Exactly. Yeah. That's what he said. They were the words he used. Chats of yeah. County title. You'd be silly to <laughs> walk away. Absolutely. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But but just on Gidor, Charlie, as well. You know, I've, I felt I felt sorry for Gidor on Sunday. You know, I thought they went into that final with real belief, and we thought they had. I I knew they believed they could win it, mm. but. Neil Connell went after their younger players, targeted, even Martin Regan said after the game, he had four or five debutants playing their first county final. Yeah. So they smelt weakness there. And that's not on them lads, it's just a lack of experience. Absolutely. You know? A big day. A big day. And then you had Eamon and Neil, who been probably Eamon's last game for the club, not the way he wanted to bow out, you know? No. And to be fair to them, they didn't throw in the towel. You know, they kept playing to the very end. They scored 1-3 or 1-4 towards you know, exactly. Yeah. And you could see after the game, it wasn't that they were disappointed. They almost felt as though they'd let themselves down and let the club down, getting beat so badly in the county final. But in the cold light of day, when they stepped back from go, we have five or six debutants in there. We had a couple of lads who had struggled with injury during the year. They had a lot of lads away during the summer, which well documented. Yeah, yeah. And all those things came home to roost on Sunday. And that's why I thought before the game, they needed New Connell to come off their game and then to, to make it a, a contest. And that didn't happen. And once they were on it, there was yeah. only one winner. Just before we leave it then, John, Senior Championship, what, what do we take out of it? Leave Connell, obviously, are going to dominate, have dominated, look as if they're going to continue to dominate. There's been loads of talk about the formats and all that sort of stuff. Does that really matter now? Not a bit, Charlie. You know, to, to me, it doesn't matter, you know, seeding quarterfinals or not. You know, I'll go back to Charlie. I said to the students all along, for us to win a county championship, we had to beat Neve Connell. Be it a quarter final, semi final, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. You know, that was my outlook on it the whole season. And I would say, in the back of Neve Connell's mind, they were thinking the same thing. Beat St. Judith's, and y- y- you're, you're, you're a long yeah. way there. Yeah. So, McCoos are coming, Charlie. You know, McCoos are young. They're, they're, they're that young that it's all in front of them. So, they're mad for road. They're mad for training. So, they'll come, they, 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 they'll improve again. Uh, Glenn Swally. You know, weren't that far away. weren't that far away. But then you see the gap, Charlie, between McCools and Gidor. Like McCools, Gidor were comfortable against McCools, and then they're mm. blown out of the water. Yeah. So it's the same thing. If McCools got into a quarter final or semi final against Steve Connell, would they get blown out of the water next year? Yeah. You know, Kilcar seemed to be on the demise. You know that seems to be fair enough. St Michael's have gone way back. So you're chatting about Bally Shannon coming decent. You know they're they're, they're competitive, but they wouldn't match Neve Connell in a, in, a, in, a, in a knockout game. If you go back to Charlie, who, you know, even the top four, who out of the top four, another team has beaten the top four team in a knockout championship game mm-hmm. this last five years? No one, to my mind, you know. Yeah. You know, no, none of the smaller or weaker teams you, you are can teams predict coming what's up going to happen, basically. A long way out. Now, next year, I think it will be different because I think Kilcar have stepped back and I think, you know, McCool's could come to beat... Beat maybe a yeah, Calcar yeah. in a quarter yeah. final semi final. Could they beat St. Yeah, Judas? I don't know. Stages this year. Yeah, you know, yeah. so it's hard to know, Charlie. But I think McCoods are definitely a common team. For Masters, we know about their underage, so it'll be interesting to see, but it won't happen next while, year. It'll be a while. It'll be a while. Yeah. Glenn Swally possibly can improve again. St. Judas, hopefully, they'll be there, thereabouts, mm. as as the number two team now, you know, behind Neve Collin. But on paper, the only team, or, you know, at the minute that possibly could challenge them. Gidor, I don't know. I think that. I just think that was a a bad defeat for them. I think Eamon and Neil could retire and that is mm-hmm. a big blow to them and, you know, it could be a rebuild. Now, they always have players, Guido, so are they going to, are they going to, yeah. is that well, young team? Mulligan and, and yeah. are they, Fadden Ferry and people yeah. like that. So are like, they going to dig in yeah. for the long haul and if they do, well then they, they'll be a common team. Mm. The senior championship, is there hope for the future for it, Danny, or is it just going to be? No, I think there is, Charlie, because it's like anything, it's like when Dublin dominated the inter-county scene, you know, you can't see a way out. You think yeah, you know, yeah. Do Kerry sit back and go? We can't. We can't bridge that gap. Tyrone, we can't bridge that gap. Don't go. Don't go after Jim McGillis for the crack. We're looking to bridge that gap. Yeah, you know what I mean. So Galway trying to bridge the gap. Muir always trying to bridge the gap. So for me, the kill cars, the Guidors, in particular those two, because they were part of this top four story. They're not. There's a top one, two now. Kill, Lenny's are ahead of Unions, and then they're ahead of the rest. Yeah. So do the Kilcar group sit down in winter time and go? Let's throw a hat at it, or they'd go. We'll be the group that takes these boys off their perch. Gidor will probably do have to rebuild that on the twenty-one team. I think they'll probably put a lot of younger lads into their setup next year. Ronan McNeil has mentioned that this year they thought they're yeah. a bit early, yeah. so they could be two to three years away from reaching their peak. McCool's, yeah, they're coming, but are they 
coming quick enough to dismantle Nick Condal next year. Probably not next year, but maybe the next two or three years. Glenn Swilly, because they've Michael Murphy, because they've three championships under their belt, they'll fancy their, they'll might think they're the team that can take Nick Connell off their perch. Mm. And then of course you've got St. Unions who have to be the team this winter sitting down going, guys, we have a we have a gap to bridge here. Yeah. We, and how are we going to bridge it? And that comes to things like not heading to America next summer, possibly. It's about your S and C program over the winter time. It's about creating that bond within your club. It's it's a lot goes into trying to bridge that gap because Nick Connell have now set the standard. But it's like when I started the answer, do you give up now? Or do you go, come on, we've got to dig deep. Let's be the team that knocks them off their perch because they are the best team in the county right now. Without doubt. So congratulations to Neve Connell, senior champions yet again and uh, impressively so with that victory. Right, uh, they go on now to play in the Ulster Club Championship. I just briefly mentioned the fixtures there. There's a double header in Breffany Park is scheduled for Sunday, the 12th of November. In the Intermediate Championship, it's Downing's taking on Bally Hayes and the f- senior, that's the Intermediate, and the senior that follows, Gauna, the Cavan champions taking on Neve Connell. Now, uh, we'll just mention the uh, Junior Ulster Championship because Narossa won the championship here. They were due to play Listen to Ski on Saturday week or are due to play Listen to Ski but as you probably are aware, most of you GA fans, there is an objection from Moville who claim that Narossa had 16 players on the pitch at O'Donnell Park during the final. So they've raised an objection to that, which has been currently investigated, we're told, and uh, the work has to be done on that before any decision is made. But as it stands, Narossa are due to represent the county against Listenski on Saturday week. So we won't we won't talk too much about that because it's a tricky business. Double header in Breffney Park. No disrespect to Cavan, John, but we always feel we have a chance against the Cavan champions, Downings and Neve Connell. Should they feel that way? Oh, I'd tell you, to give them a big chance, but it won't be easy. It won't be easy. It's a step up. It's a step up. Gowan will be a better team than 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 Guido. There's no doubt about that. There, five fifteen. I think they scored in the final mm, at the weekend. Yeah, yeah. good team. They're the back to back champions, and yeah. they have a long history. Gowan and a proud history. So they'll not be easy to beat Cherry and Ulster. Ulster's just so so difficult. Like. Neve, like Carrigan are no world beaters, Terry. And I know it was a bit of a smash and grab game mm, last year mm, against yeah. against Nick Connell, but they still bet them. You know, they still so I think that's hurting Neve Connell and they think they've a bit of unfinished business, but it won't be easy, Charity. You know, the, there's no guarantee that they'll beat Gauna. I'd say Gauna will be a good team. I, you know, it could be a great game. Yeah. But uh, you know, and Downings too, Charity. Downings will have a good chance. Downings are a good team, I think, at intermediate level. Mm. But Dunning all teams haven't the best no, record at intermediate no. and we don't have the best record at senior level either Gidor the only team now I know people someone said to me that St. Joseph's won it in 1975 but that was an amalgamation different, of two, yeah, two clubs you know situation. Danny what do you think? Yeah I, I think Nick Connell genuinely will be targeted in this also championship I, think, I don't have any doubt in my mind on that um, they have a three week lead into it which is yeah. a really really good period of time they can get their homework done on Gauna um, they beat Castle Rohan, the Cavan champions, was it three seasons ago or two seasons ago? Beat them well up in Cavan. Cavan, that's right. So they'll not fear Gauna. I know Gauna are a good team, obviously. And look, Ulster Championship, they're all good teams, Charlie. This is the thing. Yeah. But there's something about this new Connell team now. I think I think they'll target Ulster. I think they'll feel that that's the one thing missing from their CV. You know, if you look at likes of Leo McLoon and Marty Boyle, I mean, likes of Marty Boyle and... Brick didn't even get on the last day. No, exactly. And yet they're out in the field celebrating the same as if they were Absolutely. on. Absolutely. So they're going to be they're going to drive hard for, for Ulster. Certainly they'll want to get over Gauna and then I think they might face into Kilku possibly. Or Glen. Glen, Glen, Glen in the Glen, semi. Yeah, so I mean it's a minefield. But yeah. the way they're set up and the way we know that they can play might suit them so called better teams like Glen. I think they might have a real cut at Gauna. I think they'll have mm. but see, look, we'll say that Nikon will mix their game during the game. Yeah. I mean, we saw that in the county kind of final. They yeah. can throw five, six, seven men forward and within 30 seconds there's 15 all, behind the ball yeah. again. So they're so fluid in how they do things. So I think they will target Ulster. I think they'll they'll look to beat Gauna and I think then they'll go into a potential semi-final against Glen, feeling as though St. Eunice nearly beat them in the park two years ago. Probably should have beat them. Probably should have beat them. Mm-hmm. They'll feel that they could be the team that'll take them out. So I think New Connell are a genuine threat in Ulster and I think their mentality will be Let's go and make a mark in Ulster. I think they went to. Did they get to an Ulster final? Ulster final, two thousand and ten. Yeah, yeah. Cross yeah. McLean. Yeah, but yeah. well, not one recently as well. It was a semi final. No, was it? No, it wasn't the final. No, it wasn't the final. No. I don't think. Other than Downings. Downings. Yeah, I agree. Downings. See, the one thing that Downings have are quality forwards, forwards. right? So the three lads up top that can get scores, 
And because the rest of the team allow them to do that, the rest of the team then go, look, we'll do the heavy lifting back here. We'll be solid. We'll be hard to break down. We'll do our man marking. We'll win dirty ball around the middle of the field as long as you boys deliver up top. And that's worked for them all year, yeah. in Division 1 and in the Intermediate Championship. Now, the team they're playing against, Bally Hayes, they beat, is it Den or something? That, Den, yeah, that beat yeah, Downings yeah. in the junior final a couple of years ago. So they're obviously a decent outfit as well. Mm. So, look, Intermediate Football, Charlie, at Ulster level, you know, they're going to be tight games. Mm. Um, home advantage probably is a factor. But if the two teams, two games are on the same venue, is that right? So double header as far as I know. Yeah, so that's going to be a big help yeah. to the Donegal Club. So you'd yeah. like to think that the Glenties people and the Connell fans of Glen Early and support Downings yes. and Downings will stay on and support the Connell They've afterwards gone, yeah. whereas the two Cavan teams might kind of go do their own thing because they're at home. Yes. You, know, when you, you know what I'm saying? So when you're away from home you kind of get that county feeling that's around right. you. Yeah. So oh, look, I would love to see the two of them win and I think yeah, I'd back the two We've of them. We've got a chance to do yeah, that. Yeah, 100%. Definitely right. got a chance. Yeah. We wish them well. Thanks to Dunaff Construction Company again for their sponsorship. It's much, much appreciated during the podcast. This is our final podcast of 2023. John and Danny, I'd like to thank them for coming in. We've got to finish off now because the draw for the Ulster County Champ- sorry, the County Seniors Championship took place at the weekend, John. And uh, I was sitting listening to it and I just I knew what was going to happen because Donegal could have come out just uh, one earlier than they did, they did I think or maybe two earlier than they did, and they would have been in that top half of it, yeah, which yeah. most people agree is going to be the handy part, down, play Antrim, and Armagh play Fermanagh. Mm-hmm. Uh, but inevitably, we're going to take on the Ulster champions, Derry, in the quarter final, And then after that, it's going to be probably, with all due respect to Kevin, it's probably going to be Tyrone or Monaghan in the semi-final, and then it's going to be Armagh or down in the final. So Jim McGuinness is to get the Ulster title back. We're going, going to have to the, do it the hard way. We're going to do it the hard way, Charlie. And, you know, Jim has always put massive emphasis on the Ulster Championship, which probably, obviously, coming from Donegal, because we remember, Terry, when Jim took over, we had only won five Ulster Championships in our history, and he doubled it. Well, not he, Declan won a few then, you know, but yeah. it was a big thing for us. I think, Terry, the, Ulster, the, the provincial championships are slightly, you know, the same emphasis as none of them. But I think with Jim McGinnis coming in, he'll look for Donegal to win an Ulster Championship, so it's going to be very hard. I don't know, Charlie, if it's if it's the excitement of Donegal playing Derry. I was more excited as Jim McGinnis against Mickey Hart again. Yeah. You know, yeah. that got me more than that than it's against Derry. But obviously Derry are Ulster champions and, and they're going well. And we know Mickey Hart's gone there to try and win an, an All-Ireland, not an Ulster title with with, uh, with Derry. So it's going to be great. It's only in the road, Charlie, in Celtic Park. Yeah. So next April, is it? Have we a date yet? No date yet for the So it, it, it won't be long yeah. coming around, Charlie. No. So, you know, no. it, it, it's got everyone talking, which is great. And as we keep saying week in, week out, Jim has given the county a great lift. Everyone, you know, is talking about the football now. And the, you know, there's tried games going on and who's in the squad and what's happening. And, you know, are they putting up a fence around convoy or are they not? And the whole <laughs> thing. So it's all good, Charlie. It's getting people chatting. So, you know, that, that draw definitely has got the, you know, got everyone chatting. So it's something to look forward to. Should we put an emphasis on Ulster? Because I've heard one or two people say that the All Ireland series is all that matters, and uh, we've heard this argument, Danny, so often in the past. The rest of the provinces are Mickey Mouse stuff. You know, we, we know who's going to come out of there, but you never know who's going to come out of Ulster. But should we, you know, put the, because we've got a Division Two campaign to run before that. Obviously, yeah. it's just important to stay in the top four to stay in the uh, All Ireland. So there's a lot of things at stake here. Yeah, a, a huge amount of stuff at stake, Charlie. Listen, I think, I think the big challenge that Jim will face is the new structure, where you play your league games first, and that has an impact on your seeding yes. in the All Ireland. So, yes. for example, I think the Monster draw takes another team out of Division Two that could go into the sixteen. I think so. We we might have to finish in the top five instead of the top six. Yeah, something like that, right? So you have that to worry about. Then you have this Ulster campaign, and then you have the group stages. So yes. the big challenge for Jim will be. They all talk of this periodization and training. When do you peak and how often can you peak? So when Jim was in charge before, he used the word traction a lot. Mm. You know, we'll need to get traction in the league, we need to get traction in the championship. It's going to be very difficult for Donegal to peak three or four times in the year. And that's why the other provinces have huge advantages. Yeah. So knowing Jim and his mantra before, he places huge emphasis on on the Ulster Championship. Oh, it out. And if you remember back when he took charge the first time, it was Tyrone that he was targeting. Yeah. I have no doubt that all he'd be talking about 
in the next number of months will be Derry, Derry. in Celtic Park and knock them off their perch and then that'll give them huge confidence going forward. So I think they'll aim to peak. I don't think they'll aim to peak in the National League. I think he'll play the National League as a sort of a sounding ground to see what where his players are at. He doesn't need to win Division 2. He probably needs to stay in the top half. Top, top four, I think, top will four, guarantee, guarantee it. Guarantee, so yeah. that won't be his peak. His peak will be the Derry game in Celtic Park because the way the also Championship is then, it's near enough week on week. Pretty much so. And to get that top seeding, you need to win your province. So I think he he needs to time it, he needs to work on it, he needs to look at it. But Derry will be the forefront of his mind and I think he'll try and peak for that and then for the all Ireland series. He might take his foot off the gas a wee bit the league. Yeah. Just on the player side of things, John, uh, are all the players that need to be or have they been in the county squad or are there players out there that need to be brought into it that will improve it? Or has everybody that should have been in it have has well, been in it. Well, I suppose Jerry Ethan O'Dell man of the match on, on Sunday. Yeah. And he's been playing phenomenal stuff this last couple of years. Now, I know he was in with Declan one year, but he didn't really go in last year, maybe the year before that. So I don't know if he's going to hang around. There's word that he might he's, go. Ethan was telling me on Sunday he's heading for Australia he's in stayed, January. Yeah, and there was word that he was going to go this year, and that Regan and them sat him down and, and yeah. got him to stay. So he'd be lost to death, but he'd be lost to any god, Jerry, the way he's playing at the minute. I think Jim will look, have a strong look at some of them Glenties boys, you know, f- from the fact that people mightn't see them as being county players, the same way they talked about not rating some of them Glen Swilly players, but like Alton Doherty, cornerback, is he not as good as cornerback as we have in the county at the minute? Well, Big, strong is, player, yeah, yeah. fat, conditioned, you know, man marker, uh, man marker you yeah. know, so like, yeah. uh, Neve Collin have a few more of them boys, you know, I don't know, Jason Campbell, um, I know a couple of the Doherty's are around, you know, he'll probably have a look at, you know, get them get them involved, Kieran Thompson. So uh, there's a few of the St. Junior's boys going in, Kieran Moore's going in, I think, and uh, Peter McEnough. They're, they're definitely worth a, a, a shot, Charlie, at trials anyway, and see, you know, yeah. get them McKenna Cup games and see what they're... I don't know. The way it is now, Charlie, you know every player in the county, and Jim's seen all the football and the selectors, this, you know, well, from, he's ju- been, from junior... He's been very visible since yeah, he got the job. Junior to right. intermediate to senior, so they'll all be in a trades or whenever they can go back trading and get a look at them. And and uh, I don't know, is there anyone else standing out? What do you think, Danny? I, I think the big problem for Jim is going to be what, what did we lose over the last 12 months in terms of the players and their conditioning? Because if you want to compete with your Derry, even Tyrone, the Dublins and the Kerrys, their level of fitness, their level of conditioning is really, really high because they've yeah. had it now non-stop for maybe five, six seasons. We didn't do it last season by the sounds of it. So he has to rebuild that. Um, in terms of players, the, he'll probably look at the profile of the player. The modern game requires a very athletic, tall Agile. Two foot of good yeah. players. Now yeah. he play, he, we do have plenty of them in the county. I think our middle eight will survive against most teams. I think his areas that of concentration will be our inside line, offensively and def- defensively. Mm. And that's where you're hoping Oshin Gallon can come through, Conor O'Donnell come through, McBrearty. We have enough good players in the top line. Paddy Morgan could play inside possibly. Jimmy, Brennan, Jimmy Brennan. So we might have enough, yeah. our full back line. Have we got enough man markers in there against the top top quality players? Because at the end of the day, what Jim will what Jim will be looking for, he's not looking for players that can play National League Division Two. He's not looking for players that can play McKenna Cup. He's looking for players that can win in All Ireland. Mm. I mean, that's Jim McGuinness will want to win in oh, All yeah, Ireland in his time. So he's going to have to find within the county, within the players in club football, a gem or two that we might have missed. Are maybe, they there? Maybe are you there, the, well, are they you, there? You don't know until you try them, Charlie. And. You know, Alton Doherty is a player, for example, that we're all talking about at the minute mm. because of the way he played against Nile O'Donnell in the semi final, he marked Darrell Beal in the county final. He he will bring something. He came back from a cruciate like, like him an injury. Much, right. Yeah. So he's a strong yeah. mentality. Does he get a crack at it and does he does Jim trust him? He's from his own club, but you definitely mm. will look at him. Mm. Um Or McFadden Ferry is a player we need back if he's back and at it. He's in Australia at the minute. Does Kieran Gillespie remain injury free and has he the hunger to come back in? Because he's still young enough. I mean, there's three players immediately that weren't involved last year. Yeah. Along with the likes of Brendan McCall, Keelan Ward. So all of a sudden, then you've got five, six, seven lads battling for the full back or cornerback positions. Mm-hmm. So Jim has a great competition, number one. The players have to buy into it, number two, and they have to want it. Because Jim, as I said earlier on about club players, 
you can want anything all you want. It's what yeah. you're willing to do. So uh, you've got to come in under Jim and do what he wants you to do. And if you do follow his mantra, he will get you to a level of fitness. He will have a game plan in place. And then it's about trusting your players to go out and do their stuff. Yeah. So a county of our size, we should be able to pick up 25 to 30 players that can compete with the best counties in the, yeah. in the country. The yeah. demands are great, John. This is the problem. Well, this is it? the thing, yeah. This is the big thing. The yeah. demands are great. And we know McGuinness is going to put no, big uh, demands on them. Yeah. You know, it's 100% in or 100% yeah. out one or the other. Mm -hmm. There's no one between. No. That's a big ask for players. That's a big ask, Charlie. And as Danny said, and he's 100%, you know, there's players that are capable of playing county football but are they willing to commit their yeah, life to it? Yeah. And that's that that that's where it gets that's where it gets tricky. You know, mm -hmm. you, there's plenty of boys good enough to play county football, but are they going to give Jim McGuinness, as you say, that full on commitment seven days a week for yeah. the next nine months of their lives? And that's a massive commitment. Or six months or I know the season's got shorter, but it's a, but Charlie, they're young fellas, they're elite athletes, they're very good players. Why would you not want to play for Jim McGuinness and play question, for your isn't county? It? Isn't you know, it? so yeah. you 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 know. Why you know you only get one chance at Charlie? Mm. You know you only get one chance. You've, your 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 inter county career is going to be short, or, or the years that you can play it. You know, yeah. so you, so if Jim McGuinness comes to you as a young player and says, right, you know, I see potential in you to be part of my plans going forward. Are you bite the hand of him, Charlie? If I was twenty well, years, well, everybody, well, because young fellas are I know they now. are different, Charlie, yeah. and, and I, I know that, and I, I know from a couple of the senior Donegal players this last couple of years, some of them have stepped away, that they have found a big change. During COVID and yeah. after COVID, yeah. with the mentality of some of the younger players, oh, it just yeah. it yeah. just was where it was used to be be all and end all was football, football, play for Donegal. Mm. That seemed to have gone a wee bit, and you know that's that possibly is, is going to be a factor. But you would hope that they would all buy in. Yeah, I mean Jim Jim's come back, Danny, and we've said this before. His legacy is there for what happened. Yeah. I mean, it's ten years on or whatever, uh, almost from the it's over ten years from the old Ireland yeah. uh, sort of thing, but. He's putting his head on the chopping block now as well because the expectation is that we'll get a repeat of what happened from 2010-11 stroke through to 2014. Yeah. There's no guarantee. No guarantee. And look, this will come down to belief. Simple as that. If Jim McGuinness believes that we have the talent in this county to win in All-Ireland, then he'll get that message across well, would very he have come, quickly. Would he have come back if he didn't? Exactly. He wouldn't. Why would he? Exactly. Why, why would, would he? Why, well, Jim McGuinness isn't coming back for the crack. No. He's coming back to deliver for this county again, right? Now, the question then is, when he delivers that message, the boys back in 2012 or 11 at the time, slowly but surely began to believe his message. Not yeah. initially, right? This group is an easier sell. They've seen it. He's done it before. This man can do it again if we buy yeah. into him. So he will set the target. The question is, do they believe in Jim and do they believe in themselves? If they do, then this is achievable. Because what Jim will bring will be that level of professionalism, that intrigue. There's, there'll be almost a mystery around them. And players in it will love being in it because he'll create a siege mentality. He'll close the ranks. You'll, you'll, you'll know nothing about county football. You'll know nothing about no. the camp. That'll just no. go quiet. But if you're a young fella and that's what you want, what an environment to go into. I was, uh, you know I, mean? <laughs> I was chatting to a man today, Charlie. You'll yes. hear all these stories. But uh, he was in convoy. He was going to training or he was going up maybe with a ladies team or some sort of team. It wasn't the senior team. And he said he knows a lot of people in Donegal GA and some man stopped him and asked him where he was going. And he didn't know who he was in convoy the Centre of Excellence and wouldn't let him go up near, I think, maybe where the senior team was training. But that's, I said, what else do you expect? But it was just, he said he didn't know who it was. But this man, so there's no point going over there. No point going over. <laughs> but no point going Jim over. will bring them on a journey. Oh yeah, and they'll enjoy it. Yeah, because he will. He'll be the. He is a fantastic man manager, and the pride he has in his county. Oh yeah. If he instills that into the players, and if you look at the Donegal players that that missed out or didn't commit last year, they've had the year off. Mm -hmm. mm. You know what I mean? Mm. They've had. They so if they they should be mad for playing now, yeah. well, they've had their break. But the demands are huge, Charlie, and like John's right. The team that he inherited, or the squad he inherited 10 years ago, 11 years ago, they were seasoned. They mm -hmm. were in their late mm -hmm. 20s. Some of them, they were around a while. The boys he's depending on now are maybe in their early 20s, finishing up with college, maybe want to travel. COVID took two to three years of travel out of their lives. Yeah. So it might, football might not be the priority. It could be. But if it is their priority and they buy into this guy, yeah. No, and interesting we say, though, someone mentioned it to me today too, that Sean Patton got sent off against 
Derry, was it? Or the last championship match. Last championship. So was he suspended? He's suspended for the next championship match. So that's the first round of the championship against Derry or the first league game? Is it the next under county game? Because no, it'll be it, championship. Uh, well, if he's suspended for the championship, mm. what does that mean? That means you have to find somebody to do that. And do, 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 uh, that's what I'm saying. Well, it opens the door for other keepers. And possibly. does it mean that he plays him through the league because he has to play him in the first round of the championship against Derry? Well, he could play somebody else in the league, a couple of matches or whatever. Yeah. But if you're if figured you, out, yeah, he figured out. But that's what I'm saying. Does, does he put all his eggs down into someone else to get them yeah. trained up because they have to play against Derry in that first round of the championship? So See, I'm not sure. Did he get it off in the All Ireland series? Wasn't yeah. It? yeah, so it should be the All Ireland series. Team, uh, I don't know. So we should well, do separate competitions. Don't be, don't be raising things like that, John. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, generally we're in good shape. You think we're we're because we had a disappointing year in 2023. Well, Charlie, we said this you know, a couple of weeks ago. It couldn't get any worse. No, I mean. The Donegal senior team last year, and look, well, I'm not blaming any of the players. The players can only survive in the environment that's created yeah. by the people in charge, right? It didn't work out. And the men in, char- in charge were doing their best, yeah. but it just didn't work out. So that's gone now. The f- we have to look to the future. What does the future look like? Look, we don't know. The point of Jim McGuinness is a positive. There's no doubt about that. The vibes we're getting from listening around the county is that the boys are all committing to him. There's going to be a stronger squad next year. Men are coming back hungry, looking for success. Because you only get one real crack at getting Jim McGuinness and playing under Jim McGuinness yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to be... If if Donegal go and have success over the next three to four years, and I'm talking about genuine success, mm-hmm. get to an All-Ireland semi-final, maybe a final, maybe one of the damn thing. Do you want to be sitting back in the pubs watching it or do you want to be part of it? You'd be very and foolish. that's a question for those yeah. young players. Yeah. Do I want to be part of this journey because I believe this can happen? If they don't believe it, they won't do it. No. But if they believe it, do you want to be part of it or do you want to sit back and watch it? Yeah. And if you're a player, John, you have to you have oh, to you say have yes. to go at it, Terry. You, you have might, to go at it. You have to go at it, absolutely. No yeah. no excuses. All right. We have plenty to look forward to in 2024 then. That's for sure. The McKenna Cup will be getting underway in January. Uh, there's some talk about we're trying to get rid of those competitions. I would be a favour of that, I think, because the McKenna Cup over the last number of years really lost its value you know but anyway that's for another day and then the National League we're looking forward to the start of that anyway that's it from us in terms of the podcast for 2023 many thanks to Danny O'Donnell and John Harn. thanks lads for coming on much appreciated it's been good working with you and Tommy Conway here at Full Tilt Studios as I always say when we're finishing up you have the who are watching have the ability to hit the stop button (laughs) Tommy has to listen to every word here every day so uh He's patient and he does a fantastic job and we really appreciate it. Many thanks to Donaff Construction Company in Boston, Paul Freed's company. Paul, we really appreciate your support in 2023 and we'll look forward to it again. And I know that you're a keen watcher of games, whether it be club level, county level and a keen watcher of the podcast, but we really appreciate your support. So that's it from myself, Charlie Collins, on behalf of Donegal Daily and Donegal Sports Hub. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the feedback. It's been really interesting hearing all the feedback. And as John Hearn knows, you can't please all the people all the time. Hopefully we'll be back in 2024 to uh, annoy some more people. Thanks for joining us. The Donegal Sport Hub Donegal Daily Championship Podcast.